the biggest deal breaker in a real estate transaction is the home inspection. With all the reports that I've seen of the home inspection, many times there's a big list that the home inspector will put in the report. The question is, what's reasonable and mandatory and what's not? As a Staten Island Realtor, I love helping sellers navigate the home selling process. I'm so happy you're watching this video because if you are a seller selling your house or if you're a buyer buying a house and you just did a home inspection, in this video, I'll share with you what fixes are mandatory after a home inspection to help you keep your deal together. Right after <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sphere Popolevsky. I'm a realtor with Supreme Home Sales. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I come on every Monday and hit you up with some tips and tricks about real estate. So let's talk about what's mandatory. I want to help you keep your deal together. Today is a hot market, so the sellers, you as a seller, have the upper hand and you have probably 15 offers waiting and knocking on your door just waiting for your current deal to fall apart so they can get a chance to buy your house. But there's still some mandatory fixes after the home inspection that you as the seller will have to do. So let's tackle them one by one. The inspection report is usually split up into three different categories. One would be the overall condition and maintenance items. So the inspector will put a list together of items they would recommend to the buyer to be maintaining on a regular basis. For instance, how often do you have to change a filter in the furnace? How often do you have to change the batteries in the smoke detector? The second part of the report would be minor. These issues would have to do with things like the roof is already 25 years old, it's still in good condition, but it's kind of finished its lifespan and it's about to die. So they will put that in the report for the buyer. A hot water heater that its life expectancy is 12 years. Maybe it is 12 years, but it's in working condition. The inspector will put on the report that the hot water heater is about to die. The third part of the report is the major issues. And that's the part of the report we're going to be talking about right now. And that's the part of the report that's going to tell you what fixes are mandatory after the home inspection. The most common one would be an electrical issue. Major electrical issues that's relating to code and safety issues. The second part would talk about plumbing, plumbing, drainage, sewer, septic if you have a septic tank, or water issues in general. Mold or water damage are big scares to a buyer. Many times I've seen that buyers walk away from the transaction just because of mold and water issues. That's a big, big, big one. If this is something that you are aware that you already experiencing in your house, I highly recommend that you take care of that with a professional before you even put the house on the market. HVAC problems that are actually affecting the comfort of the home. So for example, a huge difference in temperature from one floor to the other, or the HVAC system isn't working properly, maybe it's noisy, leaky roofs, and missing shingles. Also, a huge, huge, big one. Now, we all know that a roof can only have three layers on. So if you are on your layer number one, there are some negotiation items here. If you are on your layer number two, that one too, but if you are on your layer number three, that could be a huge deal breaker. So maybe a good idea is get a roofer to check the top of your roof and see if you have missing shingles, or of course, if you have any leaks, make sure you take care of that ahead of time because those leaks will also cause mold and it's very unhealthy and you don't want to be a part of that. We live on Staten Island and Staten Island has termites. Yep, nine out of 10 houses will have some kind of termite evidence, either active termites, previously termites that were taken care of and treated, 
But in any case, 9 out of 10 homes on Staten Island will have some kind of evidence of active or past treated termites. Expect that to be something that's going to come up on the report. If you know that you already had termite treatment at some point before, maybe it's a good idea for you to get a termite professional to come in and take a look. Every buyer who uses a mortgage to purchase a home will have to produce a clear free termite certificate to their bank that's part of the items required to be approved for a loan. So knowing that ahead of time, make sure that you are already on it. It's okay, it's no big deal. It's just part of living on Staten Island. Home inspector's job is to find something wrong with the house. I've never seen a home inspection come on with absolutely nothing in it. However, some of the items are up for negotiations and some of the items are completely mandatory for you as the seller to make the repairs after the home inspection. This period of time is not meant for fighting. Don't take your boxing gloves and start fighting with the buyer and buy if buyers do the same. Don't approach the home inspection as a fight. It's all about understanding what is mandatory for the seller to do and what is negotiable for the seller to do. As long as the overall condition of the house is in good condition, do not start nitpicking into different kind of items because you are expecting to purchase a used home, right? We're buying a used home. We're not buying a new construction. And I've seen even a new construction properties that some things are wrong with the property. When you're selling a house, it would be probably a good idea for you to get a home inspector to come in and do a home inspection for you ahead of time, if that's what you want to do, or just wait to get an offer on the table, have the buyer do the home inspection, and then take care of all the items. There's two ways you can handle taking care of these items without when you decide to sell your house and you think that you may have to deal with any of the items which are mandatory for you as the seller to fix past the home inspection. You might want to take the time and get a home inspector before you put the house on the market. But in either case, if you wait to get an offer and then the inspection, the home inspection report comes up with these items, you can handle it two ways. One way is to make repairs on your own before the closing. And or which I recommend you do is just credit the buyer for these items. Do not get involved in fixing those items yourself. The biggest reason is the buyer may not agree or like the way you repair those items. For some reason, the buyer may walk and now you made repairs and the next time around another buyer comes in and now the inspector, the home inspector finds additional issues and now you're gonna have to go and repair those issues so don't do that credit the buyer let your listing agent and the buyer's agent uh, come to an agreement of a credit dollar amount to make those repairs and just do that call it a day the goal is always keep in mind find a win-win situation it's a stressful time to sell a house it's a stressful time to buy a house. Be nice, create a win-win situation, and everybody will get what they want in the end. I recommend that you watch what YouTube thinks you should watch next. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to look for my video on Monday. Don't forget to click on the notification bell, and I will see you on my next video.